Hey guys, Mr. Myas is here. Ooh, the lighting seems to be there. We go. Oh, there we go. We got some lighting now. Say, how are you guys doing today? This is Mr. Myasis, and I'm going to talk about position, velocity, and acceleration. So now that we have some idea of how to do derivatives using the power rule, we're going to move on to look at some applications of using derivatives and where we're going to use calculus in context. That's the big thing, right? We want to be able to use calculus for the context in which um, we can, so real world stuff. So let's talk about position, velocity, and acceleration. Oh, by the way, I'm going to break this up into two videos. So the first video will be some examples. The second video, I'll just continue with some more examples. So here we go. So some important terms that you need to make sure that you know. Um, the position function gives the location of an object at time t. Usually they say s of t, x of t, or y sub t. The velocity function is the derivative of the position function. The acceleration, oh, by the way, if, uh, if the velocity is negative, then it's going up or it's going to the right. If it, the velocity is positive, it means it's going down or to the left. Acceleration is the rate of change of the derivative, um, the rate of change of velocity. So it's like the derivative of the derivative, right? Or the second derivative of position, the derivative of velocity. An initial position or initial velocity is when time is equal to zero. Our speed is the absolute value of, of velocity, so it doesn't have any sign. Uh, the displacement is the net change in position. So it's the final position minus the original position. Just think of it, if I uh, walk from here to the door and the door and back, my displacement is zero because I really haven't gone anywhere um, because I came back. So that's different than total distance. Total distance takes the sum of the distance that you went in so it takes the uh it, it accounts for all directions so if i went to the door and i went to the and i came back then i would add up the distance from the door the distance the door back and that's how the, that's how much my total distance is it's different than displacement all right so let's take a look at a few examples here and i just want to remind you here's the big thing guys the position all right you go to position of velocity you take a derivative you go velocity to accelerate acceleration you take a derivative all right so derivative derivative okay so let's take a look at some examples i'm going to move closer up here and... all right so example number one let's suppose i have a position function s of t equals t cubed plus t find the velocity and the accelerate acceleration so i just said the velocity is the derivative of the position so I'm just going to take my derivative with respect to t here, just like I did for um, with my power rule, right? So just take a power rule. So then the acceleration is the derivative of velocity, which is the second derivative of position. So I'm going to take the derivative of the derivative, and I'm going to get 6t. All right, so there's my velocity, and there's my acceleration. Not too bad, right? So... Here's the big guy. Here's my big example. All right, 2 through 11. So we're going to use this position function. If an object if an object moving on a horizontal line, so it's moving on a horizontal line, so it's going backwards and forwards this way. Okay, left or right. Distance are measured in feet, and time units are in seconds. All right, so I might need to copy this down just because we're going to be scrolling over. I'm going to copy this um, function, this uh, position function down a few times. All right, so what we want to do is we want to find the initial position of the object. So the initial, anytime we see the word initial, we're saying t equals zero, all right? So the initial position, we're going to use the position function. So we're just going to plug in zero, and we're going to get um, 0, 0, 24, 24, and we are in feet. Okay, we've got to make sure we put our units, really important to put our units. What is the velocity of the object at t equals 1? second so we want the velocity at t equals one so the first thing we're always going to do if we want the velocity at a certain time we're going to take the derivative and then we're going to plug our value in so we're going to take our derivative so our velocity function is going to be the derivative of the position so we're going to have 16 times 48 t squared minus 72 t right we're just using the power rule three times 36 is 72 and then we're going to find v of 1, and plug 1 in, 
and that's going to give us negative 24 feet per second is our units for velocity. All right, because it's a rate of change. It's instantaneous velocity as opposed to average velocity, which we'll do it a little bit less, which is just a rock when we did a rock before. What is the speed of the object at t equals one second? So remember, the speed is the absolute value of velocity. So we're looking at the absolute value of the velocity function at one. Well, we already know what that is. We got that in the last problem. So we're going to have 24 feet per second. Boom. All right. Not too bad. What is the acceleration of the object? Okay, so acceleration, remember, is the derivative of velocity. So we need to find the derivative of velocity. Okay, so our velocity function was right here. 48t squared minus 72t. So we're going to take the derivative of that. And we're going to get 96t minus 72. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. All we got to do is uh, we just got to do power rule, right? Now we're going to want to plug in 1 for t. And we're going to get uh, 24 feet per second per second. Uh, or we can say 24 feet per second squared. All right, either way is fine. Okay, let's look at number six. What is the object? When is the object at rest? So an object is at rest when the velocity is zero, right? It doesn't have any velocity because it's at rest. So the an object is at rest when the velocity is zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my velocity function, 48t squared minus 72t, I'm gonna set equal to zero, and I'm gonna figure out, well, when does this happen? All right, so I've gotta do a little factoring here. 2t, fruity, minus three, and I'm gonna get t equals zero seconds, and I'm going to get t equals, uh, let's see, add 3 divided by 2, 3 half seconds. All right, so i got two places when the object is at rest. Okay, number 7. When is the object moving to the right? Well, we said in the, I said in the beginning of the video, an object is moving to the right when the velocity is positive. So when my velocity function is greater than 0, the object is moving to the right. So when does that happen? Well, let's see. I know that the velocity is at rest at zero. I'm sorry, the object is at rest at zero and three halves. So what I'm looking at is between zero and three halves and over here. Um, what is the velocity doing? Well, if I plugged in a number here, let's say I plugged in one into my velocity function. Where was that? 48t squared minus 72. I plug in one in there. I'm going to get 48 minus 72, which is a negative, right? So right here, it's negative. And if I plugged in like 3, okay, then this is going to end up being positive, right? Because this is going to be a bigger number than that. I'm going to get a positive. And if I went below 0, I'd also get a positive. So the object is moving to the right when t is less than 0 seconds, which kind of is weird. Negative time. I have negative time. All right. So that's when our object is moving to the right, when we have positive velocity. When is the object moving to the left? Well, we can look here. It's when it has negative velocity. So we would write down that if the object is moving to the left when v sub t is less than zero. It's really important that you write this down, too. You need to write down when you know that it's going to happen. Then you can write down your answer. This is That's kind of your explanation. So we know that it's going to be between 0 and 3 half seconds. All right? Okay. Let's move on. When is the velocity of the object equal to 54 feet per second? Well, we know what the velocity function is. We found it earlier. 48t squared minus 72t. We're going to set that equal to 54. Well, for this one, um, this one is going to be a calculator problem. So I'll just star this. Calculator. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 48t squared minus 72t minus 54 and set that equal to 0. Now, 
what you need to do here is you need to graph this and find the zeros or if you're in uh, if you have a cast calculator you can just you know solve it using that or I think polynomial solve might work as well so you any whatever way that you know how to do that I'm sure your instructor has done that or I have other videos that shows you how to find solve an equation in your calculator but you're gonna get t equals negative 0 0.549 oops seconds and you're gonna get t equals 2.049 seconds All right, so you'll need to use a calculator for that all right number 10 what is the displacement of the object between t equals 0 and t equals 2 remember displacement is the um, the to is the the distance that we've gone it's the difference of the max it's the difference of this distance minus this difference let me write it out you'll understand it's the difference between s of 2 minus s of 0 okay that's the displacement this is going to give me my position at two seconds this is my initial position and that's basically all I want to know all right so I'm going to go and do that so s of 2 is going to be 16 times 8 minus 36 times 4 plus 24 and then if I plug in 0 I know that it's just going to be 24 so I'm going to do that which is going to give me 128 minus 144 which is negative 16 feet all right and displacement is a vector so it can be negative it just means that it's 16 feet to the left of the initial position all right so it means uh, 16 feet to the left to the left to the left to the left of the initial position all right now total distance is not a vector it will not be it cannot be negative so let's take a look at a total distance problem so what we need to do for total distance we have to add up all of the difference uh, all of the changes in direction so we know that we go to if we start at zero we know that we're going to the left i believe right <laughs> i believe right right okay so we're going to the left and then when we get to t equals three halves we start going to the right and then we're going to stop at t equals 2. So we need to find the distance here, find the absolute value of that, then find the distance here, and then add those two together. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So what we need to do is we need to find s of 0, we need to find s of 3 halves, and we need to find s of 2. All right, we get this information again from our table here when we found when the object is moving left and right. All right, so s of 0 is equal to 24. s of 3 halves, I'm going to just plug that into the equation, and I'm going to get negative 3. And then s of 2 is equal to 8. Now, this is the position. This is where they're at, right? This is like their, their, uh, their location. It's 24, negative 3, and 8. So remember, I'm starting at 24, I'm going down to negative 3, and then I'm going back up to 8. So what I need to do is I need to find the sum. I need to, I need to find how far this was and then how far this was and add them together. So I can do that by going 24 minus negative 3, which is going to give me 27 feet. All right, and that's going to the left. And then I can start at negative 3 and go how far is that? That is 11, right? We can. That's pretty easy math to do. Okay, but now I'm going to the right. All right, now I'm going to the total distance. I'm going to add these two guys together and I'm going to get 38 feet. And that's my total distance, all right? Yeah. All right, guys, so I went over a lot of things today. Um, position, velocity, acceleration. In the next video, I'll do some more examples and we'll wrap this guy up. Catch you next time. Bye.